Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the vlog. Today is a crisp, beautiful, sunny day, and it's a, it's a very exciting day. Last night, I drove six and a half hours to Prescott, Ontario, just south of Ottawa. Slept here for the night, and now this morning, I am at Hurricane Performance. Oh yes, I'm here to finally meet Dave and the crew in person. I've got the mock with me, and it's getting some serious upgrades. Yeah. Roy. Yes. Yep. Okay. Yep. Nice to meet you. Finally. Good to meet you. Yeah. Hi, Luke. Nice to meet you. My hands are frozen. That's all right. <laughs> you got the mid pipe. You know, when I first started out, I bought a Mach Z back in the day. That's what I was racing my buddies with. And then I put a Yamaha motor in my Mach Z, and that was the sled, the outlaw sled that I built before this one. But when Skidoo decided to, re to release that new Mach Z, um, I had to have one. And then when I had to have one, I had to build power in it. And now I've learned to love that sled. It's a not, not really got enough power stock, and it, most people would, would agree to that. Yeah. Um, when we're done with it, we add 35 horsepower to it, and it kind of brings it to where I think it should have been when they released it. From day one, from my first call with Dave, it, it was very clear how much or how important it is to him to have a reliable sled. And that's very important to me too. You know, the majority of my riding is all trail riding up north, you know, very remote locations, oftentimes no cell reception, all that stuff. The reality right? is that the Moxies are a trail sled. Mm -hmm. um, they have to be bulletproof. Whether it's the Moxie, the Sidewinder, the Thundercat, if it's got pump gas in it, it better not break. And, um, and our customers demand that. So knowing that, that has to be our first priority. It has to be safe. You don't want your engine to break. And, and we guarantee it won't. The most important safety feature that we have is knock protection and overboost protection. You know, saying all, of the sa all, all we can about the safeties, people still, we advertise 230 horse. People expect it. Mm -hmm. So to keep the 230 horse though, what we found is that when we have everything safe and we have parameters that we know it runs in and can't vary outside those parameters, well, then we can bring it to the limit of the parameters. We can actually make more horsepower, and that's what we've actually done. I've not measured the more horsepower. We see it on the tack. It makes more RPM. It goes faster. But if, if we didn't, well, our customers have expectations. So it has to be safe first, has to make power second, and it has to make it as we advertise it. And we advertise 230 horse if you put a mid-pipe in it and our clutching control zone. Dave tells me Luke is going to be the, uh, what, are we, what are we calling you, the master technician or whatever you want, whatever scapegoat, you want. master tech, whatever. <laughs> well, I like master tech better than <laughs> scapegoat. Why don't you uh, tell us what uh, what we're doing? So we're going to set up your mock, all these parts and the aftermarket ECU, we're going to bump the horsepower up because who doesn't want to really do that to their sled. Uh, so right now I'm just going to end up fitting some of these clutch arms to the uh, the clutch to make sure the clearances are good. Then we'll install the clutch kit, helix, throw in a gear, do a, a mid pipe upgrade, and then we'll install the ECU. We're gonna check over the sled in general, make sure that it's up to snuff to prepare itself for this, and I guess that's it for now. So we just changed out the, the helix. What it does is it's just a hill and there's a spring. The angle of the helix, or the angle of the hill, changes the characteristic of how this clutch opens and closes. What we're doing is we're adding some angle at the end of the shift rate so that it opens quicker and, and provides less resistance. And on the top end, as long as you don't start getting belt sleds, it's a benefit. The, the mindset of clutching these sleds for trail is different than racing, is different than off-trail, is different than mountains. But I can do it many different ways. This is just our general trail clutch kit that works. Cool.
put a new gear in it, it's gonna exceed the mile an hour of the stock gearing pretty quickly after we do what we're doing. It's gonna give you more mile an hour. I'm not gonna sacrifice bottom end because it can pull it. Reset the chain tension. It's about as small of a gear as we can go with where we don't have to shorten the chain up. While I was waiting for Loop to do his stuff, I did notice a little something in the corner that, that caught my eye. And, it, and it's interesting because I've been racking my brain a little bit trying to figure out what, uh, what the next springtime toy might bring to the channel. And uh, I gotta say that uh, the Maverick was definitely on that list. And I just happened to spot a little Maverick in the corner here. So I wanted to know what, what that was about. And I was looking for an opportunity to get a head start on the Mach Z. Well, the 2021 Maverick is a head start on the Mach Z and just so happened I knew a fellow that had one. It's been here for several months. We started our development for the Mach Z with this Maverick. It took, really? uh, we, were, we worked on the, the Maverick for 21 weeks okay. full time. So before the Mach. Yeah. Before the Mach, yeah, yeah, yeah. knowing it was coming. Okay. But honestly, now we know that engine very well and we know the platform very well. Uh, so now we're working right back on the Maverick again, getting ready for our April release, and we'll have our 230 horse kit available on the Maverick as well. We changed the ECU so that we can we can include launch control and there's data logging options and all kinds of stuff right there. But more than anything else, we have all our safety parameters in place. Our factory cluster works. So the communication, you, you don't see or hear anything different, it just flat out makes more power. And then when you want to activate your, your launch control, it's there. You had me at launch control. <laughs> <laughs> I figured that when I was testing your sled. <laughs> no, but that's awesome. What do you guys think? Should, should we bring a Maverick with, uh, with launch control and 230 horse to the channel? I, don't know. I think that answer has already been given. <laughs> <laughs> Comment below to let me know if I should bring it into the channel or not. So you got one stubborn bolt on there? One bolt, about one in 10 sleds, we get a seized fastener. If I don't get it out, I have to take the turbo out to extract it. So, back and forth we go with some penetrating fluid and hopefully it frees up. If that doesn't work, heat it up. That'll work. Success! I'm not sweating, you're sweating. <laughs> That's taking a lot of time. Well done! <laughs> uh, uh, there it is. The cold flip. Tell me, what are, you, what are you doing? What are you, what are you getting done? Why were you here and what are you leaving? So Dave was gonna help me out uh, with a little clutching. Uh, just make sure everything looks uh, good. Uh, basically just dealership stuff. So I came to a performance shop. So I should be leaving with a, uh, what are we gonna call it Dave? Horsepower wise, about a 245 horsepower Sidewinder. Nice. But my wife doesn't know that. So. Stop. Let's make sure she doesn't subscribe to Beaver Tail Toys then. That's right. <laughs> yeah, so looking forward to it. <laughs> nice. So Luke's just buttoning it up now. He's putting the stock muffler back on. We've had quite a few conversations off camera trying to decide if I'm keeping the stock muffler on. Ultimately, we've decided to do is we're going to do the Hurricane Performance, mid-pipe, and the stock exhaust. That's how we're going to start the setup. Then I'm going to swap it out and put the Sand Sandale. Sandale exhaust on, um, which is the full exhaust, so that's going to be integrated new mid pipe and exhaust, and uh, you'll get to see the difference. You notice it was a little loose? Yeah, so when you lift the sled up and we brought it in, the track's kind of hanging down here, and especially on a, tr on a sled that's going to make a bit more power. You, uh, you're gonna get a ballooning effect. The track's gonna yeah. stretch out under uh, top speed and, and it's not necessarily under acceleration, but on D-cell, what happens is it takes up the slack of the entire tr track and it shoves it forward to the drivers, which is where your brake is. That's gonna push the studs and the track up into the tunnel and it, that's when you potentially get your stud uh, scratching your heat exchanger. So I'm gonna tighten this track up so it prevents ballooning. I mean, I've done it a hundred times. I'm gonna measure it side to side, center the track, more mile an hour, tighter, and it, it'll kind of benefit everything everywhere. I 
initially just set both of the adjusters equally. You're gonna let it run a little bit and the track's gonna center itself wherever it wants to. Then I'll adjust one side or the other to move the track back into its center line. Just from experience, uh, there are gauges out there you can buy. There's lots of ways to do it, but uh, you know, after doing hundreds of sleds and adjusting it, I just know that pushing down that much with a certain amount of force is, uh, is enough to know. So you're going out, Dave. What are you looking for when you go out like that? Well, I just want to make sure it runs real nice as we expect it. You gotta make sure it doesn't overboost we have a safety there, boost cut. So if it doesn't hit the boost cut, that's good. We also gotta make sure it doesn't under boost. So how I'll check that is by RPM. Make sure that the RPM comes to where I want it. And I know it's making the right power. And then I, I'm confident it'll be good from there. Then I get to have some fun. Then you get to have some fun, yeah. <laughs> Well, Dave, I thank you very much. My pleasure. It really was a pleasure. I had an amazing day here um, with Dave and Luke and the rest of the gang. I can't wait to show you guys some content with this, show you what it feels like as best as I can, what it sounds like, all that good well, stuff. Well, Luke, that's it. I just wanted to thank you for everything. Yeah, it was thanks a pleasure. for coming. Can't wait to get it out there. Uh, you're going to enjoy it. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. I think so. Let us know how it is, eh? Yeah. Oh, you'll. What you'll, a great bunch of dudes. Back. I'm so happy with how today went. It was such a great day i'm back on the road now i've got another six and a half hour drive heading back home um, it's definitely going to be dark when i get home so we're gonna have to put a, a little bit of a pause on my first impression until tomorrow morning at which point i do plan on taking it out onto the french river as well as hitting the trails a little bit and giving you guys my first impressions i can't wait it can't come soon enough <laughs> Let's get home! Alright, I am back home after an amazing day at Hurricane Performance. The boys there treated me so well. Dave got to try the sled. He was happy with what he seen. I did not get to ride it, unfortunately. I've had to wait pretty much 24 hours. It's been killing me. The time has finally come. So I'm gonna do a small little section of trail and then we're gonna bring it out on the lake to do a couple of wide open runs once it's warmed up. Are you guys ready? I know I'm ready. I can't wait. Let's go. First off, I'm definitely noticing, I mean, just at slower speeds like this, I'm definitely noticing the difference in the clutch, which is to be expected. The engagement point feels a little bit different. Getting on to a uh, little bit of a bigger road here, heading into the sunset. How nice is that? <laughs> okay. And warmers are kicking in. That still works. That's good. Just doing 50 on the road here. Engine temps at 65. Just gonna give it a little blip here, just a feel. Okay, okay. <laughs> Instant smile as usual. <laughs> 
still going about 60 here. Okay. Sea trail and look at that ladies and gentlemen for fresh tracks. Can you believe it? <laughs> look at this. Yes sir. Yes sir. French River Snowmobile Association. Thank you very much. Ah, there's the groomer. No surprise. That's it for the fresh tracks, but don't worry, we are at the French River. And we're just about to uh, open this up here. Uh, let me go by. That was my buddy John, he's on the groomer today. Sweet. I actually just bought a trailer from John today. So I'm gonna take a little bit of an easy run here first. Feel it out. That's a hundred. Feels like that's about one third throttle maybe. 120. A little bumpy here. That's 125. Easy. I don't even know if I'm at half throttle right now. A little bumpier than I would uh, like it to be. a little closer to the stakes here, see how it feels. I'm gonna open it up. Here we go, full throttle. 150, 160, 170, 175, 182. One of the parts that I love about this sled right here, just oh those noises. All right, let's get back on the hard pack and uh, try a launch control. See how this feels. I think that the button doesn't work anymore. If I hold this, I forgot to ask that question, but yeah, no, nothing's happening. So I'm holding the sport button up. I know that. You see with with this ECU there's no more eco mode it's just always in sport which is basically how you drive this thing anyway I don't think I've taken it out of sport plus yet um, all right so I think I just hold the brake and let's see if she's two steps here yeah okay ready let's go Woo! Yes, sir! Oh, that's the feeling right there <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, oh that feels nice, and brake, so it pops around 25, oh with a few backfires, yep, let's go, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yes, and I, okay, yep, there it is, <laughs> oh, so that's a, <laughs> the best I can describe it is like it's a seat of the pants type of feel. That's that's where you feel it. Yep, right down in the business. But uh, I'm gonna lean into this one and give it a shot. You guys ready? <laughs> I'm ready. A few backfires and let's go. Okay, right there. Yep, that's when you feel it. God, it just pulls and pulls. Yeah, buddy. Okay, so 
the snow's not that hard packed where I just was, but uh, that was about 175, I think I seen. Okay, we're gonna try this again, and this time I really want to see how high I can get this baby. So so far, no GPS. I think these cameras might have some GPS, so I might get some data. I'm hoping. Um, but we'll have to wait and see. This is kind of a first test for me. Look at that sunset. Ah, oh, it's amazing. I love where I live, by the way. I don't know if I told you guys this, but uh, it's a pretty sweet spot. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> as far as the speedometer goes, I've topped this out at 188. And that was basically the day I raced with Andre on this exact body of water. I love the backfires, that's so fun. Yes, 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 let's go! the speedometer when you're going that fast so i'm not gonna lie it's a little bit bouncy a little bit choppy so um gotta pay attention to what i'm doing here um but the speedometer does keep track of top speed theoretical top speed i realize that um and it was 188 when i started the sled when i left today just now after that last run it is showing two zero zero so I don't know. I don't know if that's true or not. Hopefully these cameras will uh, keep track of it. I'm not sure if they do. Just killing it with the groomer footage these days. Check this out. Oh, it's so shiny. Oh, he's gonna let me go back here. Thank you, John. Thank you, sir. Woo! Yes, that's the happy battle. Yes. Yes! Holy f That's awesome. Okay. Yep. That's good. No complaints there. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay, yep, yep. There's the flutter. That's my impression of it, I love it. And hey, if you throw in a backfire here and a pop and a crackle for good measure, I'll take it. Okay, yep, skis come up. See, the skis didn't really come up on the trail before. That's new. Yep, and I like it. And on to the French River. Here we go! <laughs> Look at this! How can you not love this? Oh, this makes me happy. Okay. Here we go. Ooh, that was fun. Ah, yes. There she is. Wrap looks nice, eh? Just still waiting to work out what's going to happen with the side panels. They don't fit properly. I've explained that in another video. But, uh, yeah, anyway, looks good. I'm still happy with the design. And, uh, oh, yeah, what about this? This little girl right here. Oh, yeah. Oh, you remember that? I'm giving that away. Yeah. Did you enter yet? Just buy a shirt. Buy a shirt and you're in. It's $25,000 sled, could be yours. So, closing thoughts. Did I waste my money? Short answer, hell no. <laughs> I mean, you heard me, sure. Is it still the baddest sled out there? Can it be beat by other sleds? Yeah, 
probably. But that's not really what I signed up for. The goal for me was not to necessarily have the baddest sled out there. That's not a big priority to me. The priority for me was the laughs, the smiles, the fun. You heard it, mission accomplished. <laughs> that's, that's what I wanted. The other thing I wanted, still want reliability. That's yet to be seen. I'll keep you guys posted on that, but I mean, so far so good. Dave has spent a lot of time making sure that this is still going to be a reliable sled. That's important to me. So bottom line, so far so good. I will keep you posted. Subscribe, stay tuned. There will be more content with the Mox Ed. Absolutely. We'll see you in the next one.